Dear students, I welcome you all to the second session of the chapter Current Electricity. In an earlier session, we saw the brief introduction of sources of direct current, cells, accumulators, electric current as a rate of flow of electric charge, symbols used in circuit diagrams, detection of current by galvanometer or a meter, idea of electric circuit by using cell, key, resistance, etc. Now, in this session, we shall see about the concept of potential difference, Ohm's law, insulators and conductors, and the efficient use of energy. Now, let's move on to the session. Insulator. The substances which do not allow current to flow through them are called insulators. They have almost no free electrons and offer a very high resistance to the flow of current. Some examples of insulators are rubber, glass, oil, diamond, dry wood, etc. Conductors are substances which allow current to flow through them easily all metals such as silver, gold, copper and steel are conductors. They have a large number of free electrons and they offer a very small resistance to the flow of current. Impure water or acidulated water and mercury are also conductors of electricity. Now what is a closed and open circuit? The path along which current flows is called a circuit. Current flows only if the circuit is complete or closed. If the circuit is open or incomplete, current does not flow. For an electric circuit to be complete, each component of it must pass current through it. That is, it should be conducting. If there is an insulator in the path or if the circuit is broken, the circuit is incomplete or open and the current will not flow through it. In figure A, a bulb is connected between the two terminals A and B of a dry cell by two metal wire. The circuit completes and the bulb glows. In figure B, the circuit from terminal A of the cell to the bulb is broken. So, the circuit is incomplete and the bulb does not glow. In figure C, terminal A of the cell is connected to the bulb by a metal wire while the other terminal B of the cell is connected to the bulb by a thread which is an insulator. So the circuit is incomplete and the bulb does not glow. Now what is potential difference and resistance? Also we shall see the flow of electrons between the conductors. When two charged conductors are joined by a metallic wire Free electrons flow from a conductor having higher concentration of electrons to the conductor having lower concentration of electrons. The movement of electrons stops when concentration of electrons in both becomes equal. This can be understood by the following examples. 1. In figure, a positively charged conductor A is joined by a metal wire to an uncharged conductor B. Electrons move from the uncharged conductor B to the charged conductor A to balance the deficit of electrons in the conductor A. This movement of electrons continue till both the conductors have equal concentration of electrons. In figure, a negatively charged conductor A is joined by a metal wire to an uncharged conductor B. Electrons flow from the charged conductor A which has excess of electrons to the uncharged conductor B which is neutral. This movement of electrons stops when both the conductors acquire equal concentration of electrons. Now look at the bottom figure. In this figure two charged conductors A and B are joined by a metal wire. Conductor A is negatively charged while Conductor B is positively charged. 
electrons flow from the negatively charged conductor A which has excess of electrons to the positively charged conductor B which has deficit of electrons. This flow of electrons continue till there is equal concentration of electrons in both the conductors. Now what do we infer? From the above examples it is clear that the flow of electrons between two conductors joined by a metal wire can be maintained for a long time if it is somehow made possible to maintain an excess of electrons in one conductor and a deficit of electrons in the other conductor. This is done in an electric cell. In an electric cell an excess of electrons on one electrode that is cathode and a deficit of electrons on the other electrode that is anode is maintained for a sufficiently long time by a chemical reaction within the cell. Thus, an electric cell works as a source of electrons and there is a continuous flow of electrons in the external circuit connected with the cell in a direction from cathode to anode. direction of the electric current. It is a common experience that if a body is released from a height, the body always moves from a higher level A away from the earth to the lower level B near the earth's surface. That is from higher gravitational potential to the lower gravitational potential as shown in figure 1. Similarly, if two vessels containing water up to different levels are joined together, Water flows from the vessel A containing water up to a higher level to the vessel B containing water up to a lower level. This flow of water is due to the difference in hydrostatic pressure or the level of water in the two vessels and it continues till the level of water is same in both the vessels as shown in figure. We have also read that if two bodies at different temperatures are kept in contact, heat flows by conduction from the body A at a higher temperature to body B at a lower temperature till both bodies acquire the same temperature. In a similar manner, when two charged conductors are joined by a metal wire, the direction of flow of electrons is determined by a quantity called the electric potential of the conductor. A conductor having an excess of electron is said to be at a negative potential, while a conductor having deficit of electron is said to be at a positive or higher potential. In figure, a positively charged conductor A having a deficit of electrons that is at a high potential is joined by a metal wire to a negatively charged conductor B having an excess of electrons that is at a low potential. The direction of flow of electrons is from conductor B to conductor A that is from low potential to high potential. In keeping with the convention of flow from a higher to a lower level, the electric current is set to flow from a body at a higher potential to a body at lower potential, that is, in a direction opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. Thus, the direction of flow of conventional current is opposite to the direction of flow of electrons. Now, let's see what is potential difference. We know that like charges repel and unlike charges attract. Therefore, to create an excess or deficit of electrons at a point, some work is to be done in moving the charges, that is the electrons, against the forces between them. The force between the two charges is zero when they are at indefinite separation. Hence, quantitatively, potential at a point is measured in terms of work done in bringing a charge Q from infinity to that point. Now let's say if work W1 is done in bringing a charge Q from infinity to a point, then potential at that point is V is equal to W1 divided by Q. Potential is a scalar quantity. Its SI unit is joule per coulomb or volt. Similarly, the potential difference between two conductors is measured in terms of the work done in transferring the charge from one conductor to the other through a metallic wire. The potential difference between two conductors is equal to the work done 
in transferring a unit positive charge from one conductor to the other conductor. If work W is done in transferring a test charge Q from one conductor to the other, the potential difference between them is V1 minus V2, which is W by Q. Potential difference is a scalar quantity. The unit of potential difference from relation V is equal to W by Q, the unit of potential difference is given as unit of work divided by unit of charge. We know the SI unit of work is joule and that of charge is coulomb. So the potential difference is measured in joule per coulomb, which is named as volt. Thus, one volt is one joule by one coulomb or it is written as 1V is equal to 1J by 1C. Potential difference between two points is said to be 1 volt. If work done in transferring one coulomb of charge from one point to the other point is 1 joule. Now what is electrical resistance? The obstruction offered to the flow of current by a conductor is called its electrical resistance. The cost of resistance is a metal wire has free electrons which moves in a random manner in absence of any cell connected across it as shown in figure A. When the ends of wire are connected to a cell, the electron starts moving from the negative terminal to the cell to its positive terminal through the metal wire. During their movement, they collide with a fixed positive ions and other free electrons of the wire due to which their speed decreases and their direction of motion changes. After each collision, they again accelerate towards the positive terminal and suffer collision with other positive ions and free electrons again. This process continues. As a result, the electrons do not move in bulk with increasing speed from one end to the other, but they drift towards the positive terminal. This is how a wire offers resistance to the flow of electrons or current through it. Figure B shows the drift of electrons in a wire. The electrons are shown by dot and the positive ions are shown by a plus. According to Ohm's law, if a current I flows through a wire when potential difference across the ends of the wire is V, the resistance offered by the wire to the flow of current is the ratio of potential difference across it to the current flowing in it. Resistance of wire R is equal to the potential difference across the wire divided by current flowing in the wire. Symbolically, it is written as R is equal to V by I or V is equal to IR. This law holds good for constant temperature. Resistance is a scalar quantity. Unit of resistance can be written as unit of potential difference divided by unit of current. The SI unit of potential difference we know is volt and that of current is ampere. Hence, SI unit of resistance is volt per ampere which is named as ohm. Thus, 1 ohm is 1 volt by 1 ampere. Symbolically, it is written as 1 ohm is 1 V by 1 A. The resistance of a conductor is said to be 1 ohm if a current of 1 ampere flows through it when the potential difference across its end is 1 volt. Factors affecting the resistance of a conductor. Students, please note. The first one is the material of wire. The resistance of a wire depends on the number of collisions which the electrons moving through it suffer with the other electrons and fixed positive ions of the wire. In different materials, the concentration of electrons and the arrangement of atoms are different. Therefore, the resistance of wire of same length, same area of cross-section, but of different materials differ depending on their material. Good conductors having higher concentration of free electrons such as metals offer less resistance. The second factor, the length of wire. The number of collisions suffered by the moving electrons will be more if they have to travel a longer distance in a wire. Therefore, a long wire offers more resistance than a short wire. 
that is resistance of a wire is proportional to the length of wire the third factor the area of cross section of wire in a thick wire electrons get a larger area of cross section to flow as compared to a thin wire therefore a thick wire offers less resistance that is resistance of wire is inversely proportional to the area of cross section of wire the fourth factor the temperature of a wire if the temperature of wire increases ions in it vibrate more violently as a result the number of collisions increases and hence the resistance of wire also increases that is the resistance of the wire increases with increase in its temperature the meaning of efficient use of energy is to reduce the cost and amount of electrical energy used to provide us the various products and services energy efficiency can be achieved by adopting more efficient eco-friendly technologies and processes this results in reduction of one the cost of energy <clears throat> and the emission of greenhouse gases let's see some examples one by properly insulating a home it is possible to maintain a comfortable temperature inside it will reduce the cost of heating devices in winter and cooling devices in summer two the use of fluorescent and led lights or natural skylight instead of traditional incandescent light bulbs reduces the amount of energy required to attain the same level of illumination third point is the use of compact fluorescent light which we call it as cfl save 67% energy and they may last last 6 to 10 times longer than incandescent lights fourth point the use of led that is light emitting diode bulbs for lighting reduces the consumption of energy drastically it is also helpful in reducing global warming and the harmful effects of mercury used in the fluorescent light the modern energy efficient appliances such as refrigerators freezers ovens stoves dishwasher dryers etc make use of significant significantly less energy than the older appliances nowadays appliances are star rated according to their efficient use of electricity a building's location and its surrounding play a key role in regulating its temperature and illumination proper placement of windows and skylights and the use of architectural features that reflect light into the building can reduce the need of artificial lighting white roof systems can save more energy in summer the use of advanced boilers and furnaces in industry can save sufficient amount of energy in attaining the higher temperature by burning less fuel use of such technologies is more efficient and less polluting and finally fuel efficiency in vehicles can be increased by reducing the weight of the vehicle using advanced tires and computer control engines according to the international energy agency called iea the improved energy efficiency in buildings industries and transportation could reduce the world's energy need in 2050 by one third and thus it can help to control global emission of greenhouse gases students that brings us to the end of this session as well as the chapter so go through the presentation once again in your leisure for a better understanding we will get connected in another session for a new chapter bye till then take care